name's Mike, and this is my circuit vent, Yamaha DD5. I added four different gate inputs that trigger each of the pads. I added pitch control. Then there are eight data line modifications. In the down position, they're normally connected as a stock, but in the up position, that connection is routed to the select uh, switch. In the center position, that connection just left open, but then you can route that to ground, or you can route it to the eight position rotary switch, which then routes it back to one of the other, uh, one of the other data line connections. Okay, I've talked to some people online and done some testing of my own, and I think I got a good plan of what I'm going to be doing here. 
First thing I'm going to be doing is a pretty standard bend is a pitch bend or timing bend. Uh, this little blue box is the the crystal, uh, the CL2. So I'm going to be pulling that out and wiring it to one side of a toggle switch and then wiring the other side over to uh, an LTC1799 uh, precision oscillator. Uh, I'll be mounting that to this board. That will give me, so with the toggle switch, I can flip on to have the stock timing and then switch it to the, the pot that I wire to this board. Uh, I also will be adding a gate input to each of the four pads. I've done some testing and found that uh, the gate input actually triggers on the release. So I'm going to have to be wiring in a 40, what is this, 40, 4069 hex inverter. Um, so that will uh, flip the signal instead of triggering on when the, the gate is triggered, it's actually when the gate is released. And then finally, I will be doing a kind of like a data line mod um, with like an FM keyboard. This is has similar, um, similar chips. There's a CPU chip and a, a, a sound chip, and there's eight lines connecting the two. So I'm going to come in here, probably right in here, and cut these eight traces. And then I will wire a wire to eight, eight of the traces here, and then eight over here and wire in those wires to eight toggle switches. So that will give me the ability to have them all closed in the normal position and uh, select a sound, have it going, and then break some connections and distort the sound and morph, and then I can reconnect it and at, kind of play with it as they go. Um, and I think, I'm thinking maybe when it, when it breaks the connection, it routes it to another toggle. I've done this technique before and that toggle can select maybe ground or open or maybe ground and high like a, a five volts um, just like a constant I'm not sure I have to do some testing there um, and I think that's about it I'm going to be removing the stock speaker it doesn't really sound that great it's already got a good quarter inch out um, to give me some room from controls Dremel this out probably put a plate in here that I can mount all my controls I just cut my front panel out of some 22 gauge sheet metal. I just used a jigsaw with a metal cutting blade and then a hand file to clean everything up and round over a couple of the edges. And so that will fit right in there. And so now I'm gonna map out all my holes and drill those before I paint it. Got my panel all cut and drilled and then I just gave it a quick sand and now it's time for some paint. Okay, right now I am lifting the data control pins that control the main CPU with the IC number two, which is down here. Originally I was just gonna cut the, the data lines in here, but that means I would have had to solder onto here which is doable, but it's pretty hard to do, especially when you have to do eight next to each other. So I'm lifting those pins so I can solder to those points right here. And the best technique I found is a small screwdriver and some small needle nose. I've already removed the solder, some solder wick. I just get behind the pin and slowly work it out a little bit. And once I get it partially out, I can get behind with a needle nose and pull it out a little bit. I'm not really pulling it out a ton. I was kind of worried about damaging it right at the chip or breaking it off. So I'm just going to stay right there. So now I can solder one side of my switches to this point and the other side of the switches to these points here without having to cut a trace or solder onto this chip.
Okay, now I'm going to work on the wire for the pitch or the timing resistor. That's the CL2, this blue square unit right here. I have a red arrow already drawn to it. So I'm going to just use the same solder wick to remove. And once the solder is removed, it just easily slips out. Now before I mess up my orientation, I'm just going to mark which side I have the red arrow to. So I could just completely replace th that timing, uh, timing crystal with the LTC 1799 uh, circuit but I like to keep the stock uh, stock timing in there. So I wire a toggle switch and I will wire this directly to the toggle here. And then the center of the toggle will wire back to those points. And then the other side of the toggle will wire to the new timing circuit. So that way I can always switch back to the stock timing and then the new adjustable timing. And this will have the pot adjusted, I mean, uh, attached to the, to the circuit of the pot. So I started working and realized I didn't start the camera. So just for a quick recap, um, I've wired in all of the eight CPU data line connections into the bottom row of the toggles. And right now I'm working on the jumpers that jump out those same connections out to the rotary switch. I then will be wiring in the eight data line connections that come from the bottom of the board, the sound chip. Those will wire into the center of of the uh, toggle switches and then I'll be wiring jumpers from the top of the toggle switches out to the select switch which then will route to one side to ground and one side to the center of the rotary switch which then can route back. got all the data lines wired up. Originally I had all everything wired backwards, uh, just working upside down. I wasn't really thinking about the toggles. So I got everything flipped around and then I glued in this little board that was uh, pre-drilled for my little circuit board here. I was originally going to put a bigger one out here but I really don't need much space so I'm going to do that there and then I'm going to be mounting the LTC1799 uh, oscillator chip onto that board. Um, then this pot will come in here to control this. 
I will also wire in the four gate inputs over here to uh, four different uh, voltage dividers to bring like a 12 volt sing uh, a 12 volt level down to a 5 volt, which then I will route over to uh, actually sorry missed a step. Uh, that will the voltage dividers will then feed into hex inverters to flip the signal, and that will route in over here to the four different pads. Uh, one other thing, I'll be pulling the 5 volts for this uh, oscillator circuit over here from the uh, voltage regulator. This pin right here outputs a 5 volts, 9 volt in and 5 volt out over here. Okay, I just finished up my gate inputs. We have the four voltage dividers based off of this circuit. Those four, each, uh, each input feed into four different uh, inputs or inverters of the 4069 chip here. That flips the signal uh, and then feeds into the pad, four different pad inputs on the second resistor. On the bottom, I don't really have a schematic of this. All the green wires are the gates, colored wires are the control wires. But it's pretty simple, just based off of this as the voltage divider, which then feeds into one of the inverters, which flips it. Um, and then obviously, this pin or this chip gets power and ground, and then the output of that feeds into one of the four pad inputs. This is what my final device has come out to. Um, one thing I added was I found out I had to put 47k resistors uh, on each of the inputs. So these are pull, pull down resistors connecting the inputs uh, down to ground. Um, when those weren't connected, the pads stopped working once I was inputting the gate. And that's pretty much it. That is my circuit bent Yamaha DD5 drum machine. Thank you for watching.